So let's hope this is not the new normal. But it definitely is for now, and there's no shame in that. So it's been getting carted around. She's been like getting carted around the airport. I don't like it at all. <laughs> but we are about to get on the plane, headed home. No place like home. We miss our, our kitties. kitties. We miss our van. Although we're going straight to our apartment, not the van. It's all part of the process. We'll see y'all when we get to Argentina. So yesterday, we got to the airport at around noon, and then obviously we had the red eye. We arrived at our apartment about 10.30, and we had the cat sitters here. So we had to uh, get them out of the apartment, move in, get everything cleaned up, the beds made, and we had to love on the kitties. We had to love on the kitties. And I just want to say thank you again to June and you for taking such good care of our kitties. We really appreciate it and we'll remember that forever. Now I've been up for over 26 hours, but I have to pay for Snow's upcoming surgical procedures today and she'll be admitted into the hospital tomorrow morning. So I gotta go to the hospital. Some of you have asked how the insurance works, or in this case, Buenos Aires at a private hospital, out of the country, overseas, how does that work? First off, we have inter international health insurance. That costs us about $1,800 each a year. And we have about a $2,500 international deductible and then we have, if we're in the States, we have a $5,000 deductible. So that's kind of how that works. Um, the condition is we can't live in the U.S. for more than six months out of the year. So in other words, we need to live abroad, which of course, as you guys know, we do. Typically, in the U.S., when you go to the emergency room, for example, they take your insurance information, they run it to make sure it's good, and then from that point on, yeah, later you'll just get bills sent in the mail from either the insurance company and or typically the different hospitals or doctors or all the people who are involved and get money from you. But in Argentina, I think it probably kind of happens similarly, I don't know, but since we're foreign travelers, we're foreigners, we're not locals, um, what that means is they don't accept our insurance uh, up front. And so that means we have to pay the cash up front. And so, for example, uh, when Snow was first admitted into the emergency room, and they took me to the side and said, hey, Kurt, look, I'm going to bring you over here to the accounting office. The accounting office has said one million pesos. So I'm sitting here thinking, how much is that? And, and how do I pay for this? And really, at that point in time, I mean, who carries a million pesos around with them? Nobody, right? And then secondly, how much is that? And so... Um, the conversion rate, and I, I think I've talked a little bit about the blue dollar with you guys. So just to be short, for the U.S. dollar, the conversion rate, they have a blue rate exchange rate, which is about 275 pesos to 300 pesos per one dollar. Now the kicker is if you pay with a credit card, you don't get the blue rate. You get the rate that Argentina has set, which is about 150 pesos. So you get half of the money in your exchange rate on your credit card as you do by paying with US dollars. So if you apply that conversion rate of 150 to 1 million pesos, essentially that means that the cost on the credit card was $6,700. Now, if we would have been, ha if we would have had the cash, then we could have gotten it on the blue rate, which as I said, ranges from 275 to 300 pesos. Basically, 
that would have been three thirty three hundred to thirty six hundred dollars for that one bill so how much does it cost it depends on what conversion rate you get for the money and remember we're paying in pesos so credit cards not good cash good the problem is I had to pay the money up front right there so I put it on the credit card that was sixty seven hundred dollars I didn't bat an eye I didn't have a choice obviously snow's health is the priority well they go in, they run all the tests, and they come back and say, this is not good. We have to go do an angio and look into her heart. And Oh, by the way, we may have to add some stents along the way. So now we're talking, starting to talk about some more extensive testing and obviously more expensive procedures. They came in and got me and said, we need another million pesos, uh, which again is another $6,700 because I had to ring it on the credit card so this is all within just you know within just like a couple hours it's all happened pretty fast so anyway the, the key takeaway of the whole thing is guys if we use a credit card for purchase in Argentina we get half the value a market value the international market value of what a US dollar is worth if we can exchange our cash for dollars, and there's a couple different ways to do that, then we make out a uh, then we make out like more even par, if you will. Anyway, when we left Argentina to return to the states, the doctor said, "Look, get a second opinion, but based on our evaluation, you're likely going to need two, possibly three more stents, and a defibrillator, based on the damage of the." the left ventricle wall of Snow's heart. So they gave us an itemized uh, estimated cost for all the procedures, the testing, the hospital fees, all that stuff. And that cost was 4.2 million pesos. Now on the credit card, that'd be 28,000 US dollars due upfront before we can even get admitted into the hospital again for these additional procedures. Now we first arrived in Argentina, we exchanged, if you guys remember, when we first crossed the border from Brazil, we exchanged a couple hundred dollars US cash that we had, and we got 275 pesos per dollar. And so at 275, the cost of the procedure would be $15,000. So do the math, that's $13,000 difference just based on the exchange rate. Uh, basically, the difference between paying on cash and credit card. In other words, for us, cash is king. It's really required. Anyway, that's why when we went back to the US, we had to get cash from the bank, carry it back down here, and today, I'm headed over to the hospital. I've made arrangements to exchange the US dollars that I have for pesos. We have to take them into the bank. The hospital has an account with the bank. So basically, I pay the cash to that. If I haven't said it before, which I'm sure I have, but they are treating us amazingly here at the Italiano Hospital. I've been getting great help and it just helped me with that whole process of uh, paying the bill here which is really kind of a complex process just because I'm a foreigner and we're in Argentina and the currencies and the rates and all that other stuff. But in any event, we finally got that taken care of. So we're back at the hospital tomorrow where snow will be admitted. So fingers crossed guys. So on the way back, I stopped off and got some empanadas. This is where I parked the van, right across this place when we first arrived here. But I love the empanadas here. You can see all the kinds they have right here. And they're 110 pesos each. So for three of them, it's like a dollar. So I'm gonna dig in. All right, I just got back from the US and I was telling y'all how expensive everything is. So if you look at here, so 300 is 300 pesos, which is about $1 US. So here I think you get two heads for a dollar, cauliflower. So lettuce is like 50 cents for a head. 
and you can see the price per kilogram for apples, pears, and all the different fruits. So 50 cents a kilo, 75 cents a kilo, uh, and then it looks like the red peppers are kind of expensive, so they're a couple dollars for a kilo. But you can see how reasonably priced all the fruit and veg is here. And then this is just a small fruit to market, but even the nuts and the seeds and all that stuff is reasonably priced. So we were back in our apartment. We got in yesterday after the red eye. Kurt had to run some errands. I got us a little bit unpacked, but it's gonna be a whirlwind week, guys, because this morning, bright and early, we are headed up to the hospital Italiano, where I'm gonna get checked in, uh, get some lab work done, and once that's okay, we should be going in for stents this afternoon in this old ticker of mine, see if we can make it work a little better. But it did manage to get some good snuggle time from my kitties, because I missed them a ton. We do expect I'll be in the hospital a few days. Let's go do this, guys. Boy, and take care of Curdy while I'm gone. I'm sure glad you were snuggly this morning. I needed it. Missed you guys a ton. We find ourselves starting from scratch. Brick by brick. No path carved out for us now. The brush is Guys, she has emerged. Two stents Two later. Stents. <laughs> and much better blood flow in the old ticker. She's gonna be Dr. Frankenstein before this thing's all over. It's <laughs> okay though. Now tea and crackers with apricot jelly. And rest. And a lot of rest. Some of you may be wondering why we left the United States and came back to Buenos Aires here in Argentina to deal with the rest of my healthcare issues. And it's a personal decision. Everybody gets to go through all the pros and cons and make their own decisions. But for us, the van is where our home is. Uh, yes, we're in an apartment right now, but our cats are here. And we've been gone from the United States for over three and a half years. And while we were home visiting friends and family, it was amazing, but we definitely had a feeling that we were not home. Uh, so that's one thing. We wanted to come home to deal with that. Also, the health care we have received here at Hospital Italiano has been top-notch. It has felt comfortable. The cardio team, we just kind of have a connection with them. It felt like the right place to do this. And on top of that, it's one of the top-ranked hospitals in the world. And we've had no real issues with the English-Spanish barrier because Dr. Arias has been amazing. So it was our personal decision, it's the one we made, but I just wanted to let you know it was well thought through. Yeah. Argentina is where we wanted to deal with this. This is where my cardio team is. Yeah, the medical team here had a good plan for us put in place for when we returned, so we were really confident yeah. that this was the right decision. That being said, I just wanted to take a second and say thank you all so much, so much. Uh, specifically for all the thoughts and prayers, the comments on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, the love, the good vibes, all that stuff. We have an amazing YouTube family. Wow, you guys are awesome. We really, really appreciate it. Sorry for dragging you through this, but it is life. And I want to give a special shout out. You know, as we were going through this and you guys just saw, 
there was a lot of money issues involved and it was a lot of money up front and that was a you know a very stressful part as well obviously it wasn't the overarching stress but it was there yeah. and uh, you know we didn't ask and a lot of the community contributed I yeah. think we we've, we've gotten around a thousand dollars in various contribution yeah. from yeah the financial support coming in through our PayPal account and the YouTube thank you program that YouTube has has been amazing and uh, and it's been very appreciated during the stressful time guys so from the bottom of our heart thank you for that and even if you can't do that the the stories you've shared with me about yourself and the family members and other people going through the same thing and the well wishes it's we really feel it guys it's all very helpful thank you and one last thing we wanted to share with yeah. you guys yeah we have not actually told y'all my diagnosis now I'm not a doctor so this is not going to come out in technical medical terms but this is what happened I had a heart attack a silent heart attack which means one that we didn't know I was having at the time now we've backed up and we could kind of pinpoint when it happened but at the time we did not know a few weeks later is when we found ourselves in the hospital and what we discovered is I had that heart attack it damaged the left side of my heart um, pretty bad uh, the left side of the heart is the part that is responsible for squishing like a sponge and sending blood throughout your body so it can do its thing all around your body one of the things blood does is it helps remove fluid from places like your ankles or your lungs so for me that sponge squishes, but it doesn't squish hard enough to move blood fast and hard enough throughout the body to remove fluid from my lungs. So it builds up there and then I cannot breathe. And um, to kind of give you an idea of how damaged my heart was from the heart attack, a normal heart, a healthy heart, hopefully your heart, pushes at about 60%. So when that sponge squishes, 60% goes out. When I went to the emergency room for the first time, mine was squishing at 16%. And just so you guys know, the term for that is ejection fraction. Those of you who've been through that know that, but that's kind of how they measure yeah. the strength of that part of your heart. It was really, really low. Um, now, when we were back in Chance in Gainesville, it had gone up a little uh, between 20 and 25 when they did the test there. So there was some improvement. But that is why I need all the medications to help my heart pump strong enough to keep the fluid out of my lungs. And um, healthy eating is going to be a big part of that too, which we will start to address as we move forward. But ischemic heart failure with an ejection fraction of 16 is where I was at when we were in the emergency room. And it was likely brought on by the clogs or the blockage of yeah. three arteries, which initially yeah. they put one stent in yeah. the primary. When they went in to do the first test and test my arteries, there was uh, the one they call the Widowmaker. Your really big artery in your heart was 100% blocked. That was um, the emergency stent they put in right away. And then they went back in and put in two other stents for some uh, 85 and 90 percent blocked arteries. So, yeah, my arteries were in bad shape. They caused the heart attack, which damaged the muscle and means my heart just doesn't pump as good as yours anymore. And that's why, guys, she is a high risk for a reoccurrence with that low EF number, with that yeah. low pumping thing. So, therefore, I get to go and get... We're going to call my little friend, we don't have a name for him yet, but my defibrillator, which is basically when you're in the airport or something, you see that big defibrillator hanging on the wall, the paddles that shock you. Basically, this is a teeny tiny one that lives inside of my heart, and if it stops or starts beating erratically or going crazy, boom, it will shock it back to normal. So, let's go get the defibrillator put in. Let's go do that. Owie. I've got a pretty new scar, everybody. We'll see it in a few days. Oh, got a defibrillator. <laughs> She's defibrillating. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. We're happy. Snow's home. What a relief, guys. What? Huh. 
what an amazing journey through this but we made it through and that's really good news and we're going on and speaking of going on this morning I'm doing what I seem to always be doing in Argentina and that's trying to find money and you know it's not just the money transfer situation obviously but it's also been the numerous hospital bills for which we have to pay for in advance so in any event I'm headed to where we get money and that's the Western Union it rained last night it's probably about 68 or 70 the temperature is perfect um, I would like to say that I'm anxious to start exploring but honestly there are so many adjustments that we're making right now in our lives trying to figure everything out I hope you guys can kind of by now get a feel for how much stress and how much stuff this has really caused us to rethink and redo and reevaluate and honestly Snow and I are always talking this is in life what we do best as a, as, as a partnership and so this is another example of where we're just going to have to you know figure out how to live our new lives and we will guys we'll do that all right i made it back i was able to score some money what are you doing vienna what are you doing i did not get the kitties any wet food but they're okay for a few more days got some fabrosa for cleaning and i got money i held down the fort while it was gone and helped me put stuff away I did. We got game day on. For those of you who aren't from the United States and didn't know, we're big college football fans. And so today is the world's largest cocktail party. Yes, my Florida Gators are traveling to Jacksonville to play the Georgia Bulldogs. It is known as the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. And unfortunately, although I hope not, I'm afraid my Gators may get their butts kicked because Georgia is number one. But guys, we're fresh home from the hospital and we have declared this family day. Healthy snacks, football, cuddle with the kitties, hang out on the couch. We are resting and watching football. And if Snow gets too, dis too excited, she's got her little friend, which by the way, we still haven't named. Yes, the doctor gave us homework. He Supposed to pick out a name by Tuesday. Maybe I'll go post something on Instagram so y'all can help me pick something up. I don't have any ideas yet, but my name, my knee is named Bentley because it bends. So we need a name for my little defibrillator that it will help keep me alive. Ticker. <laughs> Could be ticker. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!